Hello, Steve White, Trickboy89 for Steve Arts 89. Well, I have procrastinated as long as I possibly can. Um, I mean, I was having a really bad day and I realized, oh, it's it's Thursday, it's Discovery. Oh, I have to watch Discovery, oh God. But I've, I've put it off as long as I possibly can. Um, I watched the episode a few hours ago and I think I've already managed to sort of um, lock some of it out of my mind, so I'm not sure I'm going to cover everything. But, um... This episode was kind of filler, and it wasn't the episode that um, Midas Edge was predicting. They were saying this episode was going to be some gigantic, horrific, game-changing um, use of the Guardian of, For of Forever, and I'm like, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, what are they going to do? I was really freaking out, and then I watched it, like, it's this, this, okay, oh, this is another Midnight's Edge rumour that goes nowhere, um, you know, they just, so that's a whole other video. Okay, so the episode starts off with Giorgio um, dealing with Kolba, and she's, she, she, her character is just such a cliché. I don't know why they don't just put a moustache on her that she can twirl. Um, she's acting like she doesn't need their help, but yet she's there being scanned and everything, because obviously something's wrong with her. Um, then we go to Saru. Um, He's trying really hard to be a captain, and like he's just really amateur. And he's trying, like he's, he's like, I need a slogan. I need something to say when I go to warp. What, what? And Tilly's helping him come up with things. He he, he settles on, um, oh, what was it? Execute, execute. He tries it, and everyone's like, What the hell is this? Is this, this his thing? What the? Heck? So it just cringe. Um, now, the instigator for all this in, the, in this episode basically is Book gets a message or something from um, his brother who is needs his help um, and then we find out all the stuff about his planet. So basically he's like, I need to go back to my planet and help my brother. So they go to the Admiral and he's like, no, 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 you're, you're, you're going to like get involved and entangled with um, the Emerald, whatever, the Orions. And, um, no, we can't do that. So just go as observers. Like, then, like, like, like anything about any of the interactions with Discovery since they showed up shows that they can control themselves and behave professionally and not just cowboy dipl diplomacy all over the place. Like, worse than Kirk. So, of course, they send them off. Um, <laughs> and they jump to the planet, um... They go down, basically, there's environmental issues where um, apparently the burn affected more than just um, dilithium. It caused, um, oh god, I can't find this, I wrote it down. Basically, the moon, has sh orbit has shifted or something of their planet and it's affected the oceans and these um, little blue, like, almost like little insects, what were we calling them? They're like locusts, sea locusts. Um, they've come out of the ocean and they're destroying the crops of this planet. Um, and for some bizarre reason, they end up trading their, um, God, what were they called? The transworms to the Orion Syndicate in order in, to get natural um, insecticides to try and fight them or something because they can't kill them but yet they can hand over these other aliens to be eaten as food. It's, it doesn't make any sense. Um, so they're struggling and he left because, a book left because of that because he didn't respect what his brother and his father and that were doing. So they haven't talked for years because of this conflict and um, of course the member of the Orion Syndicate, we finally see, I forgot to mention, we finally see um, Os Osira, and she kills her little twink nephew with, with the um, K-pop hair, and I'm just so glad to see him go, although he did look good in those leather pants when he was running. But, um, no, I'm glad he was gone, but he gets eaten by um, a trans worm, and it's just over the top, trying to be shocking, and it doesn't work. Um, I'm really glad to see him go, because I hate twinks, but... Uh, um, yeah, so she's supposed to be badass, so she shows up, and she's like, yeah, we want the Andorian, and Saru's like, no, uh, and she's like, 
yeah? And he's like, no. Um, and they keep doing this for a bit. And eventually um, she's like, yeah, I'm going to give you five minutes. And they come up with, well, we can't fire or get involved, so let's just get Ditma, um, because she's the most stable person at the moment, um, get her to pilot Bookship and take on the, the Orion Syndicate ship. Um, and we can just sit back and go, oh, she's just another one of our crew that just goes rogue on their own and just does whatever they want, which I guess is plausible um, after Michael Burnham's um, adventures. So um, she gets on the ship, doesn't think to take the cat off the ship, so the cat's life is endangered. Um, so she's on there with um, the Andorian, and they did, uh, he did come up earlier, he's like, why are you ignoring me basically, I, I, I need to speak to you, like I'm actually kind of relevant. And I totally, sorry, I totally forgot about the scene um, where they actually go into where the burn came from because the priorities in this episode and the characters are just all over the place. Like, they discover um, the uh, Verubin Nebula, which is where the burn's um, signal is coming from. It's a signal which is um, it's in the audio range, it's waves, but it, um, light waves, but it be, can be um, converted to sound. And of course it's the song that we heard earlier, which we knew it was going to be. Um, and then they try some more faffing around with, you know, their tech, and they discover that it's actually an SOS, an emergency signal, a distress signal from a Federation starship. So instead of spore driving, jumping right there, because there's a ship sending out a signal, they're like, oh, we need to um, um, decode the signal before we can answer it. I'm like, how about just going there, saving the ship, and then just asking them what the problem is when you get there? But no, um, it's like, well, Adora can do that. Um, I know her name's Adira, but I call her Adora because Adora is sheer as alter ego, and I, I, I just can't say one. I just, I just automatically go to Adora. Um, so Adora is like, well, Stamets is like, well, Adora can do it. She's great. Um, and she's like, I'm um, <laughs> like, what's that about? So, <sighs> so they spend hours... And they just ignore this. It's like, oh, someone, this is a Federation ship in distress. No one else can get to it. Sending out a signal. It's been sending out for God knows how long. Um, but we're just going to go to Booker's family and get involved in his problems um, and get involved with the Ryan Syndicate and basically risk war instead of rescuing the Starfleet ship. So none of this makes any real sense um, that I could... Just decipher and god i'm already up to eight minutes god i said this was going to be a short one okay they go down to the planet um like i said um there's a shield um they're trying to negotiate with um the brother who of course takes them captive right away and they're just bitch fighting the whole time um they escape eventually they're confronted with him again they have their little um picard and his brother fight um and eventually He's like, fine, turn me in, because um, he's dealing with the Orions, and that's the other reason. That's, that's like the reason why um, Book is not feeling him. Um, and they've got the conflict. So they, they fight, and um, he's like, fine, give me to her then, if you really don't care, if you're all about that. And he's like, damn it, I can't do it. And um, eventually, this is very convoluted, I'm sort of going out of the um, the order of things in the episode. I'm just going to stick with each sort of story. Um, basically, Michael Burnham says, well, why can't you just tell the sea locusts to go back to the ocean? Because um, apparently they're confused by the moon, moon gravitational or energy or signals or something. And they're like, oh, there's too many of them. We're not strong enough. So she's like, well, why don't we just use our technology, which, of course, you've had for 100 years or whatever, because you're... 100 years advanced, or at least you're dealing with the Federation, you're in a time where basically they didn't need Michael Burnham, they didn't need Discovery to do this, but they basically um, um, magnify their signal that they can give, um, the natural sort of ability to speak to animals or whatever, and they just basically magnify it and all the sea locusts go, oh cool, we're just going to go back to the water now. Um, and of course, it's all done. The Federation has solved this problem. They've been the scientists, the best scientists, have been trying to deal with for like eleven years. 
Okay, so that's done. Now, so far as um, the other one, basically, Dittmer, Dittmer gets a groove back, basically, and it's almost fun, except it's a scene from Star Wars, not from Star Trek. It's, you know, a giant ship with a little Millennium Falcon running around, like, like a little insect biting at it. Um, and every shot is the ship spinning around. I'm like, why, why on earth would you pilot like this? I mean, it's, it kind of looks dynamic, but it doesn't make sense. And that's kind of discovery in um, a lot of ways. So Dima basically gets a group back and she's basically like, I just need to like feel normal again and do, do what I'm good at and, and then I'll be okay. And that's not how post-traumatic stress works. Let, can I just tell you that? Um, post-traumatic stress, you don't just fix it by like doing your normal stuff again and suddenly you're just fixed. So is it really insulting, condescending, oversimplification of a real disorder? Um, so she's fixed, she's done now that her arc's over. Um, um, what else happens? Uh, what's, what's the rest of the story? Um, like I said, not much happens. Oh, Giorgio is kind of going to go save Michael because of course she has to. Um, and she continues having the, she has one of these, because um, they're trying to scan her and do all this stuff, and she has one of these freak outs, and they try to scan her through that, but eventually she snaps out of it and runs off and takes one of the scans and tries to do it all on her own, and um, Colbert's like, I know what you're doing, because she's going to go down to the planet, and he stops her and that, and because obviously she wasn't much help before, and um, apparently the person that she's having visions of, um, killing or being attacked by, I'm not quite sure who's been stabbed, if it's her or whatever, um, is a character from the book, there's a um, discovery book, and I cannot find in my notes the name of the character, but yes, so the person she's referring to is from a book, so I'm not going to read that book to find out what's happening, so I'm just going to hope they explain it in the show. So, okay, what's left? Um, like I said, not a lot happens. Basically, they go back to the ship, Dittmer's bragging about um, how she's got a groove back. Oh, we have the very awkward um, they speech where um, Adora basically says to Stamets, why do you keep calling me she? I am identify as they. But I've never told you or anyone else. And I'm like, there's no way in hell. They're basically they're taking today's politics, putting it into Star Trek, into the future, and it's going to age really badly. In 10 years, people are going to laugh at this. Because no one, this is not going to be an issue. And in the future, this wouldn't be an issue. Children would be taught sexuality in high school. They would know, or primary school, or high school, I don't know. They would know about transgender. They'd know about all this. And there wouldn't be people having secret revelations about themselves and keeping it to themselves and being ashamed or uncomfortable or nervous and not telling anyone. People would just say, oh, I identify as this, I identify as that. And everyone would understand what that means. And it wouldn't matter. So the fact they're bringing this up in the current sort of Federation human future culture is just so reductive and redundant and regressive. And like I said, people will be laughing at this in the future, like, oh my god, in the future they still have to explain what transgender is and what pronouns are. It's just cringe and embarrassing and they just are doing Star Trek a huge disservice. If they'd done it in some sort of allegorical sense, where you could explain a problem that's today, but take it out of that context of it being in our future. Maybe that it could have worked. Now I've heard Jesse Gender and people say we don't want we want real representation. We don't want um, um, analogy and stuff like that. But I, I haven't watched a video yet. But I don't think she's going to be too impressed with the way they do this in the episode. Like I said, it's going to date really badly, and people in the future will be laughing at it because it's so five years ago, even now. Um, so it's really not going to age well. So she has that scene, and it's a weird musical scene that like, when she's explained to him, and apparently Grey stopped talking to her, and they don't know why, and um, like I said, stuff happens, but nothing really big happens. Um, we don't get really any answers to Georgia, or there is a moment where she's, there's distortion in her face, and some people are saying, oh, it's the scan field that was over her that's distorting, that she was like breaking through or something. Other people are saying it's, it's her, that she's actually programmable matter, she's not a real person and there are all these theories and I don't care um, I just sometimes she, she kind of pulls off the Giorgio evil mustache twirling sort of character other times it's just so lame and tiresome and it just like in real life you would just roll your eyes and be like oh shut up 
you're not impressing anyone, you're not scaring anyone, or if she really was that sort of a, that level of a psycho, she wouldn't be there. It's like if Kern just, Kirk just said, "Oh, come on, Khan, just join the ship. You know, we, you're you're such a you're just such a just just join the ship. Be one of us." It wouldn't work that way. There's no way you'd have someone like her on the ship if she really was that character. And if she's not, then she's just bluster and none of it works. Um, just none of it works. And um, it's just hard to deal with. Like you're watching it and you just feel your intelligence insulted. This so, Like I've watched a couple of videos other people have done since the episode and the amount of stuff they point out because I'm nowhere near as negative as what I think I am sometimes. These people are just finding so many problems and they're all problems and they are all stupid things. Like like there's a moment where um, Michael's saying, I'm going to stay here until we work out what happens. Then like 10 seconds later, she's like, okay, I'm going to go now. And I'm like, yes, that is stupid. Why did they point this out? And that's, this guy was just going for all these little things. I'm like, yes, it's so, it just does not. It's so badly written and not reasoned out and just... I can't say anything good about it. Um, I'm trying to say something good about it. I'm trying to do sort of just short, this is what happened in this episode, and there's just so many stupid things that I just have to point out that I can't avoid. Now, have I missed anything else? So Gitmer, Dittmer gets her groove back. Um, book, actually, actually, the episode ends off with Book um, basically wanting to join Starfleet, saying, look, I'm really impressed with how you guys do stuff. I, I want to be a part of this. And so that's good for Michael, but um, and it's good for us because he looks good in the uniform. Um, yum. Um, but there's this really cringe moment where um, Linus, the Saurian, his skin is shedding, and they're making fun of us all through the episode. And he's the butt of all the jokes. Like the alien is the butt of the jokes. Like oh, let's all laugh at how strange and how other the alien is. How racist and backwards and not progressive is that to make the running joke be the difference of the alien species that one of the aliens one of the few aliens on the ship um and let's just go peel his skin like he's a freak it's that's the mentality of the people that write this show and watch this show that's the lowest common denominator that this show is being produced by and going for and that's why other people who are used to better quality cannot stomach this show as much as they try as much as they sit through it and suffer through it and procrastinate about it. But they're, like I said, I, I watch this so you don't have to. I'm thinking, even if there's only 10 or 20 people who actually watch my review and, or other people's reviews as well and don't watch the episode, if I can just save them from this experience that I'm having right now, um, I, I've done something. And I can't believe it's taken 18 minutes. I cannot make a short video about this because... Unless you just state, like, oh, this happened, this happened, this happened, and don't actually examine it or talk about it, there's no way to do a short review about this show, because it's just, once you look at it, it just falls apart, and it's just a can of worms that spreads everywhere, and I've got to stop before I get to 20 minutes, because I said I would not do a long video, and I'm not doing two. I'm not going to try and do a shorter video, because that doesn't work. I've tried it every week, and I just do two long videos where I say the same crap in different ways. So um, I think I've, I've done all I want to do. I, if, if there's anything interesting that occurs to me later, I'll do a separate like theme issue based video instead of trying to do more about this. Um, I, don't know, I just I just miss Star Trek. I just hate this show. Um, there are a couple odd little character moments. Uh, the actors are good, um, some of them, and some of the characters could be good if. They actually had episodes instead of it all being about Michael Burnham. But it's just so, so much stuff's on the nose and it's just so, it just doesn't work. I mean, Star Trek did the same sort of stories so much better than they're trying to do and they just, I, just, uh, I need to stop talking. Um, I'm so tired. This is just so draining. This show is just so draining. Um, and it just saps my intelligence and drains my energy and just makes me wish I was somewhere else. Um, but the good thing is I bought season two of Orville um, um, the other day and I haven't watched it yet and I'm going to watch it. And I think maybe every week 
Uh, I, I might just watch an episode each week after I watch Discovery just to sort of help. Because um, one thing I haven't done for a while is watch Star Trek. And that's, I think, because this whole experience with Discovery has has actually made Star, Star Trek a negative thing. And I, and I associate that. I, I, I can't... It's, it's kind of hard to explain, but I, I'm just, I don't kind of... It does sort of make me not want to deal with Star Trek at all on some level, which is really sad. But I'm really going to go because I'm over 20 minutes. Feel free to share, like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for listening. Sorry I didn't do a better job, but this is just torture. Um, and, yep, I'm going to go. I'm going to go somewhere else. I'm going to go to my happy place, which is anywhere but Discovery. <laughs>